Welcome back. So in this section we're going to be talking about how to continue using our AI script but with much more complex situations, particularly with Mixamo. Now a few things that I've done since last time is I just deleted a bunch of the waypoints. This will make it so that the flow will be much easier as we're moving from one to another. Um, I've also, I'm going to come in and grab that capsule that I'd used before and I'm going to get rid of it. Um, our tic-tac convention last time was great, but it's going to be better when we can actually use some characters in the scene. Now to do this we're going to use a package called Mixamo. Just go to any web browser and type in Mixamo.com. It will probably ask you um, to log in um, as you uh, t to get into it. You can use your university account or just a personal account. It, it doesn't matter. Um, and it's free. Once you get in, then there are two main tabs. There's a Characters tab and an Animation tab. The Characters tab, let's go ahead and pick somebody who looks like they would be walking around uh, on the river walk. I got this guy and he works out pretty well, but you can kind of pick any of them um, that are here. Um, no, I'll just leave this guy. So there's two steps. One is that we pick the character, and two, you can come over into the animations and you can pick some animation that you want to apply. So let's say that I'm going to use a walk. Um, if you select any of the animations, then it applies that motion capture data um, to that character. So you can kind of play around. There's a whole bunch of different um, walks that you could um, try, um, even if you want zombie walks or sneaking walks or whatever it is. I'm going to use a pretty default walk um, for now. It's kind of like an old guy although this maybe looks closer to what would really be happening on the river walk. Um, let's go ahead and use this one. Now there's several things that are important about these. Number one, the character is actually moving. They're not in place. Um, two, you'll notice that a lot of times over here, not all of them have them, but some of them will allow you to change things like um, the arm space. So if you've got kind of a rounder character, then you can get those arms out around or whatever you want. Um, you can increase or decrease the stride. Um, don't worry too much about any of the specifics on this. Just get it so that it's a reasonable um, reasonable walk. Now I'm going to download this. And there's a few settings here that become important. Number one, I want to download using FBX for Unity. Uh, this will uh, prepare the file just how we want. Number two, we want to make sure that we have width skin. The frames per second doesn't really matter and don't worry about uh, keyframe reduction. But FBX for Unity and with Skin are the important ones. Now when we click on download, it'll take just a second to prepare the download, uh, and then it will download um, into your downloads folder. All you have to do is just drag the asset from your downloads folder into the scene, and that will bring it in. Uh, I had another one, so let me get rid of the funny naming there. All right, now there are some import settings here that become important. I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, the boss walking that this has come in, and if you look at it by default, it's got a whole bunch of stuff here, including an animation clip. But it's got some uh, some geometry, the joints, uh, it's got a bunch of uh, meshes and some textures. But if you look at the character over here in the modeling tab, by the way, if that doesn't show up, you just pull it up from the bottom there. Uh, then you can see that, of course, the textures are there. So I'm going to start and simplest. In the model, most of the sections here should be just fine. I'm going to skip over to the materials and extract the textures. I'll make a new folder that I'm going to call textures. <clears throat> this is just how we usually do it. We're going to extract the textures. Um, if you get this sort of note, it just means, hey, I'm bringing in some textures. One appears to be a normal. Do you want me to uh, interpret it as a normal? Say yes, fix now. Um, we'll go ahead and put that in. And I'm going to extract the materials uh, also into the textures folder um, to make that set up. Now at its simplest, if I took the boss now and dragged him over into the scene, you could see that there he was. Um, but if I played the game, then nothing would happen uh, besides getting a bunch of errors because now the spawners don't have, uh, don't have anything to spawn. So what I need to do is start to make it so that he can animate. Now, to do this, if we look at the boss walking, uh, then you'll see that all he has is geometry. But if I come back to the import setting, again, I'm selecting the import setting, I'm going to come and set some things up in the rig and animation tabs. 
In the rig, rig tabs, I want to make sure I'm using a humanoid rig, and I'm going to create an avatar from this model. So both of those should be fine. Second, I'm going to come into the animation, and if you look at the animation, there's only one animation in here. It's this walk, and so it automatically sees that um, in space. Now, for what we're doing here, this will be fine. Uh, we shouldn't have to mess with any of the other issues there, but we do want to make sure we click, click apply to import both the rig that we brought in and the animation. Now what this will do is now you'll see that there's one more new avatar here. This is the avatar that will control the rig that we have set up. This will mean that as I look at the object in the scene, I've got this new animator component. Now you'll notice that a lot of this is set up fine except that it's missing something called a controller. The, con the animator controller allows us to control the avatar that actually plays the animation. So in order to make this happen, the first thing I need to do is create an animator controller. So I'm just clicking on the plus down to animator controller. I'm going to call this uh, boss controller because that's the name of my of my character. Now with that boss controller created, now I can make sure that this instance in my scene is actually using that controller and that's going to be the thing that actually defines how this animation works. To make this work I need to activate that controller so I can take a look at it. I just double clicked on it. Now what this will do is this is kind of a graphical interface that shows you what animations are playing when. Now in this case there's really only one animation, it's the walk, so it'll be pretty easy, but we're going to come back to this much more later. So the way that I will use this though is that I'm going to come in and I'm going to grab the walking animation and drag it into the scene. As soon as I drag it into my animator controller, then the, uh, you'll see that the entry point will be walking and that's indeed the only animation that will play. I come back to the scene folder, or the scene file, and play the game then we'll see um, him walk just once, that one loop, and then stop. Of course, the things that we want him to do is we want him to keep walking, okay, looping that walk, and the second thing is in this case we want him to walk in place because we're going to have the AI mechanism actually move him along the ground. So two steps that we'll need to do here. First, I'm going to come back into the import setting here and if we look down here and start to in the animation start to scroll down you'll notice there's a checkbox for loop okay to loop the time um, what that will mean is that if I click apply um, even if I click play here then we'll start to see that he keeps looping right he just keeps on moving forward so that will fix it so that he loops out here now the second problem though is that if I hit play um, he won't be walking in place he's gonna uh, start to walk forward um, keep on walking including walking through the walls um, and actually here we'll let's go find him let's go chase him uh, out into space uh, because he's not working with any sort of, of nav mesh which of course is not what we want so what I'll do is one more option here is I'll make sure and click on the character and I'm going to turn off apply root motion meaning that he's not going to use the root transformation that is part of the animation. Instead what he will do now is he will loop that animation but he'll just loop in place. Now this is kind of what we want because we're going to actually have him move um, in some other ways. Okay, so um, as we continue on let's go ahead and make him ready to uh, actually use our nav mesh that we built um, in the last tutorial. So simplest uh, way to do this is uh, I'm going to uh, create a couple things on here. Number one, I'm going to create a, uh, let's put a capsule collider on him. Um, this capsule collider will make sure that he uh, doesn't run into, or that he can knock some other stuff over if he needs to, and uh, whatever. So I can shift this capsule collider up around there about the right size. Second thing that I'll want to do is make sure that he has a nav mesh agent on him. Now the nav mesh agent of course will work so that uh, it works just like that capsule. This shows the agent that actually decides where a along the nav mesh uh, he's going to move. Now the last thing I'm going to do is make sure that the AI script is attached to him 
so that he knows uh, so that it knows to use the nav mesh agent. I remember the AI script we worked on it last time uh, just as a review all it does is that it makes sure that the script knows who the nav mesh agent is um, and then we've created this pick waypoint method down here that all it does is it picks a random number between 0 and the length of the array that are waypoints and then once it's picked the random number it uses that random number to define what its destination is using set destination. Every frame as it's moving it checks to see if it's within one unit of the set destination's position and if it is then it picks a new waypoint and comes down and fires us again. Okay so uh, if we've got that set up let's go ahead and make sure that it's got the waypoints so I'm gonna go ahead and lock this. Uh, let's go ahead and grab these four waypoints, drag them in there make sure that I unlock that for a moment um, and then here just for fun I'm gonna take all these spawners and let's go ahead and just drag the boss right into them okay so that what it'll start to do is create a whole bunch of, uh, of bosses so if I click on play now what will happen is this boss right here will go out and find one of the targets that it's gonna head head to but what it's also doing is we're also creating thousands of these other bosses that are kind of coming along. Now as we look at these bosses then he's kind of Scooby doing, right? He's kind of sliding across the ground um, as he moves from one to the other, which of course we don't want. So that's a pretty easy thing to do. Uh, what I'm going to do just for a second, let's go ahead and turn these off because I want to just see how this guy right here does. So let's come back to the boss. Um, the thing that's controlling his movement is the nav mesh agent, so I'm just kind of come down and let's try one for his speed there. Um, and so when I press play here, I'm going to hit F twice, shift F, uh, and that will follow him along. So that doesn't look like that's quite the right speed either. Let's try one and a half. Uh, how about two? Yeah, two's looking pretty good for mine. Now yours will probably change a little bit uh, depending on which walk you choose to use. Um, you might turn that up or down just a little bit, however you do it. Remember any changes you made when the game is playing will uh, revert, so after I've stopped I need to turn those speeds back to two. Uh, but what will happen now is that uh, when I uh, save and press play then I'll have these tens of thousands of bosses all coming out but their walk speed will make more sense uh, for the animation that they've actually got going on. Now a lot of how many of these you can get away with will depend on your uh, computer, what your video card is, how many, uh, how big your processor is. You can already see that I'm starting to get, I'm down to 20 frames a second. When you start to use, uh, let's now let's actually kill that for a second, that's too many. Let's say that we have uh, 30 on each and I'm going to have a wait time of half a second. Um, when you're using, uh, as opposed to when we had the Tic Tac where we had thousands and tens of thousands of these things moving all around without much problem, here when you're starting to look at deformed meshes this is pretty heavy stuff um, and it taxes your computer pretty significantly so it can get kind of out of hand in a hurry but you can see that uh, here we'll have, I can't remember, we had 30 on each, that we still should very quickly be able to see hundreds of these things um, pounding along. Um, and as they go, then they'll all be moving towards uh, these waypoints. When they reach one of the waypoints, they'll move on to another one, and off they'll go. All right, so it looks like having uh, an axis here and here makes it so that not many of them come through here, so I might end up uh, shifting where my... Uh, where, where my waypoints are to, to make that a little bit more interesting. Um, but those are the basics of uh, how that would work. Here I'm going to slide one of my waypoints over on this side and let's slide one of my waypoints. I just have to see how it looks. Let's slide another waypoint over here and go ahead and hit play. I want to see that there's more of those uh, more of those guys actually picking other paths besides just the center, uh, uh, the center bridge. Okay, so uh, plenty more to talk about, but this will get you started. Uh, go ahead and uh, see if you can get this part working, so you can have uh, lots of uh, interesting people walking um, through uh, the river walk, and then we'll look at the next step: how to get these guys to chase us once we get close enough.
so one more note uh, just proactively because this will pop up for some of you some of you are going to pick characters from Mixamo that when they've brought in even after you've carefully extracted the textures and extracted the materials just don't seem to make sense there's all sorts of strange I don't know what's going on here um, the problem is is that some of the textures have alpha channels on them and so once they have come in uh, to Unity, then Unity is interpreting the alpha channels in uh, some strange ways. The way that you fix this is fairly easy. You have to make sure that you've extracted both the textures and the materials. Um, but then because you can talk to the materials, then I can start to come in, select the geometry, right? Not the, the joints, but the geometry. And if I come down into the standard, you see that that's a type transparent. If you just change that to opaque, um, then it will actually look much more like uh, like you want it to be. And we could fix, fix the textures, of course, it would solve that as well, because um, there's still some strange things with her eyelashes. But um, on a, for, the, for what we're doing here, this will be the quick fix.